welcome to the session topic of this session is trade reforms and international trade policies of agriculture in developing countries you are aware that the reforms in marketing and trading system is very important you know the the production in a country add to the you know value of the country's production or country's gross output but the marketing and the trading help us to uh, to give a access to the you know country production to the country's population it helps making available the production of the country to the population in the domestic country as well as you know the outside country also you know we can make available the the production in a country to the people of the other country and you know uh, the farmers producers or other manufacturers they get the prices or we can say the income from the production activity through the marketing and trading activity uh, so that's why the you know the 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 marketing and trading is always having a important you know concern to the government or uh, they always want to improve the you know marketing system or the trading system in a country so that the the farmers the producers or the manufacturers they get you know the uh, good prices or good income out of the you know the production activities and actually the government is also you know is having a concern to increase the you know the competitiveness in the international market particularly after the the globalization or wto regime you know uh, we want to have more of export earning you know so you know they, they always having a great concerns how we can improve the you know com countries competitiveness in the international market particularly in the agriculture sector so basically in this session we will be discussing about the the trade reforms or the international trade policies uh, which are adopted by the developing country like china indonesia thailand and also the india and you know how they have modified their you know this trade reforms and you know brought the new international trade policy to increase the competitiveness of a uh, you know developing country like china india thailand and indonesia Uh, the globalization or world trade organization or the intellectual property right regimes they have changed the face of the agriculture in almost all the nations you know now agriculture is always you know in a great talk among the different countries and you know they want to increase the competitiveness actually after the globalization every country want to have you know the production with a great efficiency you know they want to produce you know the output using less amount of the inputs so the agricultural predominant economies they have redesigned their policies reoriented their agricultural policies so that you know the new changes uh, and you know so that the agriculture sector become competitive in the global market and you know, the developing country basically they have changed and reformed their agricultural trade policies or agricultural trade both in the national market and in the international market and when we talk about the you know the china uh, trade reforms in agriculture in china you know the economic reforms in china started in, in 1978 and and that reforms brought you know rapid economic growth in the china before 1979 you know the chi china is uh, agriculture policy basically they were aiming that the uh, rural e equality should be there in the china's economy and actually the another purpose of agriculture policy was to provide the the cheap food capital and labor for the industrial development so you know uh, their purpose was to give the Uh, development in agriculture sector so that agriculture sector provide the you know food capital and labor to the industrial sector also 
so the you know before uh, 1979 there was a tight control on the production marketing and trade this control was through the procurement price and generally you know they were keeping the procurement price of agriculture commodity below the international prices and you know the china began the implementing the new policies in 1979 and you know they were having a fear that if there is a poor growth in the agriculture sector, it will retard the industrial growth. And you know, so that's why they realized that we need to promote the agriculture sector growth. So they adjust the agriculture procurement prices and they reopen the rural market for farmers for uh, selling of farm produce. And in 1981, you know, China started decentralization of agriculture production. Uh, they have shifted, you know, from the community to the individual farm household. So, individual farm, house, uh, farm household also allowed to have agriculture production activity. And second phase of reforms, basically, you know, it was aimed at liberalizing the pricing and the market in China. In, in 1984, there was a bumper crop production in China. And, you know, the China modified uh, the, you know, the procurement policy and you know uh, the mandatory procurement uh, was replaced with the voluntary contract uh, between the farmers and government so if the farmers want to um, supply in the uh, the grain to the government they have the you know voluntary if they want they wish they can supply it was not a compulsory thing in 1993 you know again further liberalization in the grain market in china and they abolished the 40 years old grain rationing system and you know more than 90 percent of agri produce was sold at the determined prices in the open market and in 1997 in china and they have implemented a new policy that is called as four separation and one perfection due to you know there was an inefficiency of the grain barriers and you know there was a lot of financial burden on the government so you know they have separated different bureaus who are who are involved in the in the procurement of grain from the farmers so you know and perfection means basically it was to integrate the government procurement prices with the uh, market prices so through this policy they brought a, a kind of integration with the procurement prices and the market prices in 1998 you know again uh, there was a decentralized uh, grain management and you know the the responsibility of the procurement was given to the provincial governments and but the central government again reasserted uh, the monopoly control over the grain procurement the purpose was to keep the price stable by restraining competition and basically it deters the improvement in the efficiency of the grain marketing and China uh, joined the World Trade Organization in the 2001 and after joining the World Trade Organization there was a tariff cuts uh, and like you know in 2001 the 17.9% was the tariff rate and it was reduced to 15.2% in 2016 and actually you know China established a tariff rate quota import system uh, for the commodities like the wheat, corn, rice, sugar, uh, cotton and wool. So if in the import, you know, the predetermined amount of the commodity, there will be, you know, zero tariff or, you know, the tariff rate will be less compared to the normal import. And, you know, they also reduce the export subsidies and state trading. And they also fix the size of the domestic agriculture support at the rate of 8. 5%. Now we'll move to the Indonesia uh, trend reforms in agriculture in Indonesia. You know, since 1985, they are uh, announcing every year the trade deregulation de package. And you know, uh, this deregulation package basically uh, includes the reduction in the tariff and non-tariff barrier and also mentions about the import licensing. And in 1994, in line with the GATE agreements, uh, they uh, targeted to achieve the free and open trade uh, and investment in the Asia Pacific region uh, not later than uh, 2020 
and despite ongoing reforms in indonesia you know non tariff barrier was you know, significant and purpose was to protect the domestic market from the effective import competition and to benefit the state trading company state marketing enterprises and designated private company later on uh, they have provided a relaxation on the import licenses for a broad range of products including the processed foods and you know about 18% of agriculture is covered by the export control and the uh, you know the indonesia indonesia they you know basically they increase they used increased uh, 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 export restriction and the purpose was to promoting the conservation of the scarce resources encouraging greater domestic processing industries for the increasing value added and employment and preserving the environment so actually they have restricted you know the export activity in the country when we talk about the trend in the indonesia's uh, trade oriented policies you know uh, the recent examples like the, the bilateral trades continue to grow in indonesia and basically indonesia increasingly adopted trade restrictive measures to fulfill the food self sufficiency goal in the country and they have provided some restriction on agriculture import uh, because of this restriction you know there was a shortage of some commodities like beef and certain fruits and vegetables and there was a high prices of others such as corn and rice in indonesia and they have also introduced an export levy for palm oil exports uh, basically and uh, the purpose was uh, to contribute in the bioenergy policy of the you know uh, indonesia and when we talk about the you know this introducing import restriction on corn there is you know aquaculture and uh, livestock sectors is there uh, this two sector has growing in the indonesia but this two sectors is highly reliant on the important food ingredient and limited supply of corn have a high impact on the cost of the feed so you know domestic corn production is constant you know due to the inconsistent seasonal supplies and also poor post harvest management and in march 2016 you know the indonesian government that the the block uh, will be the sole importer of the feed corn Uh, to limit the import growth and boost domestic production and because of this uh, restriction actually th- there was a high prices of corn in indonesia and actually uh, this induced some of the farmer to switch to the corn crop in indonesia and then you know indonesia also adopted the uh, re- uh, the policy of restricting the rice import Indonesian regulations restrict the rice import you know one month prior, prior during and two month after the main harvest period so during this period there should be, there will be no import in indonesia and they have also restricted that the bulog is only allowed to import the medium quality rice while the private company uh, they can import the specialty rice like jasmine rice or basmati rice and such trade barriers together with high domestic rice prices has provided incentive for illegal rice import in indonesia so and you know indonesia also increased the palm oil export tax and levies and you know the indonesia is the largest producer and exporter of the palm oil worldwide and you know the palm oil cultivation has also increased significantly in indonesia and the government charges an export tax on the crude oil palm uh, in the range of 0% to 22.5% depending upon the international prices the government introduced a palm oil export levy in mid 2015 and basically this was a mechanism to support the congestion of domestic uh, palm biodiesel in the indonesia now we'll move to the uh the reforms in thailand and you know after wto uh, you know the several uh, measures have been adopted in thailand to support the sustainable agriculture sector and uh, idea is to provide various environmental and economic benefit to the society and for that purpose the the credit subsidy is provided to the farmers who are 
practicing the sustainable agriculture also there is a tax reduction on the inputs which are used in the sustainable agriculture and a community community revolving fund also developed to support the growth of the sustainable agriculture in the thailand and several uh, reforms were undertaken to create the favorable economic environment for capital formation and farmers own in investment i know there was a reforms to remove the distortion in incentive for agriculture terms of trade with the manufacturing sectors and you know uh, they have undertaken in thailand you know various measures have been undertaken uh, to have external and domestic market reforms and also uh, they have done rationalization of the domestic tax structure and you know Uh, the idea was to provide the benefit to the agriculture sector which are uh, which were similar to the manufacturing sectors and you know they have adopted various policy uh, options in agriculture sector in thailand the naturally fertile land and increasingly well developed infrastructure uh, they are the very important uh, you know uh, initiatives and in the country ranked among the you know world leader in, in the export of the rice seafood rubber and sugar you know these are the important commodity which are exported from the thailand and the thailand is, is having the positive trade balance you know around 14.73% of gdp in, in 2000 is having the export share and you know it is having significant growth Uh, continuous growth in the export of thailand so you know they have adopted different policies like you know there is changes in uh, in import tariff on wheat and wheat based products like in case of the wheat the whole wheat there is zero import tariff since, since to september 2007 uh, in case of the wheat flour uh, you know 5% import tariff is there subject to a minimum of 0.5 kg uh, you know thai bahat uh, and you know there is a duty free import for the members of the from uh, the for the members of association of south east asian nations asian and which are part of the free trade agreement and also asian australia new zealand free trade Ag- agreement and there is a duty free uh, wheat flour import from the vietnam since the end of the 2015 Uh, in case of the feed wheat uh, you know there is a new import restriction in 2017 in thailand and uh, purpose was to protect the domestic corn grower from the cheaper feed substitutes and you know they need to have the import permit if they want to have wheat import for the feed purpose and you know uh, in thailand there is a increasing focus to improve the rice for the export quality like you know they are promoting the organic rice such as the high grade you know thai jasmine rice and the prestigious home mali varieties and which are preferred by the asian and north american consumers and these two variety you know commands high prices in the international market and in 2017 a new programs to, were launched to promote the organic agriculture uh, to increase the shift from commercial variety to the organic strain and also the farmers who sign up for the scheme can receive financial support to buy the organic seeds and they have the entitlement for the subsidy if they grow the organic rice uh, they have also done reforms in the sugar regime thailand is the second highest sugar exporter in the world after the brazil they have the highly competitive sugar industry due to the low production cost low transportation cost and also you know uh, very support measures provided to the sugarcane farmers and they are also implementing the price support policy in thailand and actually the brazil they you know they launch a, a, a complaint with the wta concerning thailand support policies and after that you know the government of thailand they and they submitted that they will eliminate the sugar gain price support programs and domestic sugar price control and sugar sale administration in the thailand now we'll move to the trade policy in agriculture in india and you know in india several pertinent measures 
uh, were adopted and they have been implemented in, in agriculture sectors policy and you know objective is to provide the economic incentive to the farming community and the maintaining 4% growth in agriculture sectors and uh, after the WTO and IPR regime I know uh, there is a uh, con continuous effort to increase the competitiveness of the agriculture sector in India in the world trade and basically in India you know commodity wise strategies were adopted uh, arrangement were made to protect the grower from adverse impact of the undue price fluctuations and uh, idea is to promote the export increase the price competitiveness in the international market also uh, to promote the other aspect of marketing such as quality health and biosafety and also there is a specific emphasis on the export of the horticulture produce and marine products in the country. And in India, you know, we followed the strategy of diversification of agriculture produce and value addition, which enables the production system to respond to the external environments and also uh, help us in creating the export demand for the commodity which are produced in the country. And for promotion of agriculture export, you know, uh, the idea is to create the favorable economic environment and supportive public management system. And also, you know, quarantine system is also developed for the export and import uh, to protect the Indian agriculture from the ingress of the exotic pest and diseases. And India has emerged, uh, you know, significant agri exporter uh, in the few crops like rice, cotton, sugarcane, cashew nut, castor seed, and groundnut. And share of India in world trade is about. Uh, in, in case of the export is 2.27 percent and in case of the import it is 1.9 percent in the year 2017. And agriculture export as a percentage of the agriculture GDP has increased from uh, 8.71 percent in 2015-16 to 9 uh, percent in, in the year 2017-18. And in case of the import the percentage uh, of the agriculture GDP that has decreased from 5.68 percent in 2015-16 to the 5.47 percent in 2017-18. So, you know, India is the net exporter of agriculture produce. And actually, when we talk about the agriculture trade policies, you know, you know, in case of the foreign direct investment uh, in, in agriculture sectors, you know, 100 percent uh, foreign direct investment is allowed in development and production of seed and planting material. In case of floriculture, horticulture and cultivation of vegetable and mushroom under controlled conditions. And then in case of the animal husbandry, uh, including the breeding of dogs or fisciculture, aquaculture, service related to agro and allied sector, there is a 100 percent FDI and 100 percent FDI is also there in plantation sectors like tea, coffee, rubber, cardamom, palm oil, uh, olive tree, etc. And you now country has adopted the uh, GST, so you know there is a single tax on supply of goods and services and all the central and state tax have been amalgamated into the GST and you know in case of the agriculture produce you know the rate were uh, you know fixed in such a manner that there is, is no inflationary pressure or inflation in agricultural food items. And the India also set up agri sales in six countries like you know UAE, USA, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, China and Nepal to strengthen the India's agri export and you know in, in case of the foreign direct investment you know slowly slowly India is phasing out the foreign investment promotion board and you know now the, if there is FDI is there from uh, other country they need to directly contact the ministry no need to go to the this board and you know Recently, several uh, marketing reforms have been brought in agriculture sector in India. Like, you know, there is an amendment to the Essential Commodity Act 1955 to enable better price realization for farmers. And for this purpose, you know, the Essential Commodity Amendment Bill 2000, 
2020 brought and in after this bill uh, you know the agriculture food is to stop including the cereals edible oils the oil seeds pulses uh, the onion and potatoes will be deregulated and there will be no stock limit on this commodity in exceptional circumstances like in national calamities in the famine with surge in prices and there is no such stock limit shall be applicable to the processors and value chain participants subject to their installed capacity to exporter also subject to the you know export export demands and there is another reforms is there in agriculture market reform is to provide the marketing choices to the farmers and for this purpose you know the farmers produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation bill 2020 brought and you know aims is to create additional trading opportunities outside the apmc market to help the farmers and the farmers have adequate choice to sell their produce at a remunerative prices whether they want to go to the apmc market or whether to, they want to go to for msp prices or whether they want to go for open market or any other places they have a full choice and you know there is a provision also there to remove the barrier uh, you know in interstate trade also and there is a framework is also being developed for e-trading of agriculture produce in the country and the another important uh, reforms were brought is the, the farmers empowerment and protection agreement on the price assurance and farmer service bill 2020 and this bill basically provide a legal framework uh, to the farmers to enable them to engage with processors, aggregators, large retailers, exporters, etc. in a fair and transparent, transparent manner. And you know, uh, this bill provide a risk mitigation for the farmers. And uh, you know, they, this bill also assure the returns, uh, provide assured returns and quality standardization shall be the integral part of this framework and now we can sum up that the before the globalization and the developing countries were following the protective policies to enhance agriculture economy to provide the food security to the local peoples and basically uh, before the globalization they followed the bilateral trade agreement to have export and import through the tariff and non-tariff measures after the WTO, the country focuses on developing the infrastructure, providing the support and improve the marketing system so that you know the, the production can be done with efficiency and particular focus was on the cost effectiveness, uh, you know the production with less cost and also there is emphasis on the product qualities and safety of the product as per the international standards. With this, I thank you all.